morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Corey Alexander Willett, and it is my joy to be the pastor here at St. B. A few announcements before we get started this morning. We've got two that you will not find in your bulletin. First is that on Easter morning, we will be having a breakfast. And Rob would like any United Methodist men, whether you are officially a United Methodist man or not, to help cook breakfast that morning. Also, for Easter Sunday, we are going to have a choir. I've been calling it a pop-up choir, which means that in order to attend rehearsal, you have to also bring pop-up roles. Thank you. <laughs> we will be having a brief meeting after church about this choir. This choir is going to be sort of informal. We would love to have a choral presence, and we have missed having a formal choir. And so to fill that desire to have one, we are going to have a few rehearsals between now and Easter morning to work on a choir arrangement. And so if you would like to join that choir, whether you have the most gorgeous voice in the world or not, we would love to have you join us in making a joyful noise. This morning, we will also be taking up an offering for UPCOR, which is the United Methodist Committee on Relief. They go into disaster areas are, and are often the first to be there and the last to leave. And so all offering we take that is designated for UNCOR will be sent to them. We are also collecting forms for Easter lilies. They are available in the back of the sanctuary and out this door to my left. Please bring them back by Palm Sunday, which is April 10th, and two weeks from today. We will also be having an Easter egg hunt here on April 16th. We are inviting people to bring plastic eggs and individually wrapped candy. If you would like to donate money to purchasing eggs and candy and toys, uh, please just indicate Easter egg hunt on your donation. Wednesday nights, we are continuing to have our Bible study, and we hope that you will join us. There is no prior knowledge or attendance required in order to come and be fully active in the Bible study, and so we hope that you will join us on Wednesday nights. Originally, this coming Saturday, we were going to have a church-wide spring cleaning. However, the professional organizer I was working with was not very efficient in getting back to me, and I can say that about her because she's my mother. So we have postponed that, and we will let you know when that date has been rescheduled. Also, newsletters are available in the back. There will likely be a little tweak on the calendar for Easter morning as we figure out when brunch will happen that day but we will be sure to communicate all of that information to you as we get those plans finalized. And finally, please sign the attendance pad. We would love to know that you are worshiping with us today. Are there any other announcements that I missed? Seeing none, I want you to know that most importantly, whether this is your first time or you have been attending for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions. No matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. And I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. God's reach is endless. God's grace is lavish. God's wisdom is vast. God's hope is stubborn. God's presence is here. Breathe easy. Breathe deeply. Let us worship the one who welcomes us home. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 365, Grace Greater Than Our Sin. Mm -hmm. 
You may be seated. Let us pray. God of open doors, we often long to come home to you, to love and to ourselves, but we aren't always sure how to get there. We know that we need you, but the road back to you is heavy with distractions. So if we can dare to be so forward, we pray, reach into the cacophony of our hearts and minds and make yourself known. Quiet everything but your word for us today. Leave us awestruck. Drown out the distractions. Come as thunder or come as a still, small voice. We don't care which. We just pray that you will come. Turn on the light. Speak through these words. Find the parts of us that are lost. With hope we pray. Amen. Our first scripture comes today from 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. <coughs> Excuse me. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made himself to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You may remain seated as we sing together, This is a Day of New Beginnings, in number 383. <laughs> Thank you. 
scripture comes from the 15th chapter of Luke. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? And here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father, but... While he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. And then the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it and let's eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called to one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years I've been working like a slave for you and I've never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, one, the one who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you kill the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. Words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. May we see them. Grace by Reverend Sarah A. Speed. First came the taking, the leaving, the wandering. Then came the using, the wasting, the losing. Next came the knowing, the grieving, the returning. And then the father ran to his son and put his arms around him. It breaks the rhythm. Grace always does. As we look at this familiar story, it is helpful to understand the fullness of Luke chapter 15 and the chapters leading up to it. 
In the chapters leading up to this text, including our text from last week, we hear the emphasis on the urgent need to repent in response to Jesus' message. Then chapter 15 explains that Jesus told three stories. The parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost, son, the lost coin, and the prodigal son. In a complaint raised by the Pharisees and scribes, these stories are told. And they are told because they're concerning Jesus' penchant with associating with sinners. Each of these parables attempt to show that Jesus had no other choice than to seek the lost. And these stories demonstrate that Jesus begins his seeking before there is even an attempt at repentance. And it's easy to see that the younger son does indeed need a lot of grace because he is lost. But with a deeper look, we also see that the older son is lost and in need of an extension of that same grace. The younger son is relatively obvious about why we consider him lost. He turns his back on his family, forsakes the familiarity of his homeland, and loses sight of his religious heritage. The older son finds himself lost as his father has welcomed back his good-for-nothing brother and thrown him this extravagant party. He had remained home and faithful to his father and their religious heritage, not squandering anything or abandoning anyone. But the father continuously acts in unexpected and countercultural, yet necessary, ways. When the younger son took his inheritance and left, there was damage caused to the neighbors as well, making the banquet both a celebration for the son's return and a way to begin to repair that damage caused. He throws this extravagant party and then he leaves. He breaches etiquette and abandons his guests because he feels the absence of his son, and he seeks him out. This parable of the prodigal son invites us to look deeply at the use of the word prodigal. While it is used to describe the son who squanders or his inheritance, it also invites us to consider how God's grace is prodigal. The definition of the word calls it wastefully extravagant, yielding profusely, lavishly abundant. While biblically it is used to refer to the son who has squandered his inheritance, who was lost and is now found, who is dead and is now alive. The Father extends this reckless grace, this wastefully extravagant grace, this lavishly abundant grace. I find myself blown away with the Father's ability to extend this type of grace. I find myself thinking about the times I myself have failed to extend that type of grace. And the times that I have not received grace because of something I did. I think about the times I have been each of the sons. The times that I have been in need of prodigal grace. And the times where I have been resistant to the quote unworthy people who have received that grace. 
That's the thing about grace. Is that in all of those times, it is present and extended to us. Kate Bowler on her podcast, Everything Happens, interviews author Philip Yancey in an episode titled, The Scandal of Grace. Philip is best known for his books, What's So Amazing About Grace and Disappointment with God. Behind his wisdom is a family secret. His father left the hospital against the doctor's advice, trusting in God to heal him. He was not healed. Out of this experience, Philip has wrestled with deep questions of faith and doubt and suffering. In this episode of the podcast, Kate and Philip discuss what it was like growing up in Christian fundamentalism, being wounded by the church, the cost of unforgiveness, and the mystery and hunger of grace. At the end of the episode, Kate gives this blessing. All we know sometimes is that we need grace. So blessed are we, the graced. We who don't deserve it, whose failures haunt us, the things we said, the things we left unsaid, the decisions and addictions and broken relationships that have ripple effects we still feel today. Somehow we are the recipients of this mysterious gift. Grace doesn't erase the pain or harm we've caused, but grace still for us, the redeemable. And if we are by implication, that means they are too. Yes, even them. The rude neighbor, the estranged father, the unforgiven ex, the boss who screwed you over, the doctor who messed up, the selfish pastor, the family member who did the unthinkable. Despite what we have all done and left undone, we are graced. So blessed are you, blessed are all of us who wrestle with unforgiveness and ungrace. You who make amends, you who are reaching out for forgiveness. You who say you're sorry even when sorry will never be enough. You who find the bridge to forgive someone the wrong they've done, even when you can't forget or can't go back, or they aren't nearly sorry enough. Blessed are we who live here in this mystery, in this scandal of grace. I'm always appreciative of the reminder that we can feel our pain and our hurt and still experience and extend grace. There can be accountability and also the extension of grace. Because when there is grace, we are always invited to more. Because grace is not a pie where some people get more, leaving less for the rest of us. God is always reaching out to us. And every time God's active, stretching, searching, healing, love, finds someone and calls that person back home, it does not mean there is less for the rest of us. It means there is more. More wine, more feasting, more music, more dancing. It means another and now bigger party. I close this morning with another poem written by Reverend Sarah A. Speed. It says, I come into the room calculating what I've done as if hurt could be measured, as if there was a score system, as if we could say what I owe in return. I come into the room ready to apologize, ready to make amends, ready to tell you all the things I'll do to make it better. But you put your arms around me. 
Grace is the ocean that softens the edges. Grace is the rain in the desert. You're not sure whether to laugh, cry, or dance. Grace is a miracle all by itself. Grace doesn't play by the rules. I come into the room calculating what I've done. You say there's grace here. It feels like a miracle. I don't know whether to laugh, cry, or dance. We are blessed with prodigal grace. Grace that defies all earthly rules and conventions. And when we respond to that grace, God meets us with unbridled rejoicing. May we always be. May we always be in awe of that grace. Amen. forward for this morning's offering. <coughs> Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for these, our gifts, gifts that have been graciously given to us that we now humbly return to you. May they be used to further your kingdom on earth so that all might know your prodigal grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. battery change is all you need. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I want to point out that our prayer list can be found on the back of the bulletin. Are there any joys or concerns you'd like to lift up as a community this morning?
Seeing that, let us go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, God of lavish and abundant grace, we give you thanks for this time together once again to worship you, to lay ourselves before you, to experience the grace that you so freely give. We lift up to you the prayers of our hearts, prayers for our world as it continues to face violence and war. We pray that your peace and justice be made known. For our country, where division and separation continue to plague us, May your grace and connection be known. Oh God, for ourselves, for all of the prayers we have, prayers of hope, prayers for peace and healing, prayers in the midst of grief and loss, We pray for your presence to be made known. We pray for your love to be felt. We pray for your unending joy and peace. Oh God, we know that there are times when we fall short of who you have called us to be. We have not extended grace. We have been unwilling to receive grace. Oh God, we know that you strengthen us to do better the next time around. You are always giving us chance after chance. You are always extending forgiveness and love and grace. And even in the times we have fallen short, they do not separate us from you. For there is nothing we can do to separate ourselves from your unending love. And now, as your beloved children, created in your own image, we pray together the prayer Jesus first taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together Amazing Grace, hymn number 378. <laughs>
Thank you. 